Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is the Intercontinental Group of Awesome, our Sunday afternoon for me, evening for my friends in Europe game. Uh, we continue playing Spire, The City Must Fall, an excellent game uh, about drought revolutionaries slash terrorists. Uh, and we've been playing for quite a while. Hopefully you're keeping up. And uh, now it is time for me to hand the ball to our GM, Tyler. There you go, Tyler. Hi there. Yes, I'm Tyler. He can pronouns and we are running Spire, playing Spire by uh, Grant Howitt and Christopher Taylor. And we are starting up. We started up last time a new adventure. We have a kind of big arky campaign -y thing we're getting going. We have lots of things on the table. In fact, we have headed off into the Vermisian network, which is a failed train line that was supposed to link all of Spire. And they had put this thing together with hopes that people could traverse and it would help with commerce. But they very foolishly, A, overextended, and, uh, and the money fell apart, but also they delved too deep and it connected with the heart. And that has caused the whole network to get very strange and now is a place of hidden things and weird phenomena. And uh, our group is heading in because the Vermisian sages keep their vault there and inside of the vault is all of the knowledge that the Vermisians have collected and they collect a lot. Um, some of it is of our world, some of it's of other worlds, but uh, in fact, it, uh, it is one of the greatest storage areas of knowledge in all of Spire. And our group is going to try and find out something about these slivers that have come into Spire, which are odd artifacts that seem to give strange powers to people when they are implanted in them but we're wanting to know a little more so our magister has sent us off to find out from the Vimbisians what we can learn and so we connected with a, a uh, person uh, moat np and she is a magister herself running a group called the gear runners that uh, work inside of the Vimbisian uh, out of the uh, station the uh, it is the Polaris station on the line and they tend to be the couriers running things for you know, whoever will pay them as well as for the ministry up and down Spire and Moat took our group in acting as our guide to try and get them connected with the sages she had warned everyone to stay close that it would be dangerous but hopefully hopefully with her help, you would get through it all right. And you had traveled a bit into the darkness and had found one of the train lines where she had said, we're going to try and hustle along here and hopefully nothing will happen. And then something happened. We saw a light and then we saw one of those little pushy push carts that go on trains things only this one was kind of run by some steam it was going pop, 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 pop. and on it was a guy throwing off spikes and all around him were people grabbing the spikes and hanging hand uh slamming them into making there's already a line there don't know what they were making oh but they're all transparent and ghostly so maybe they're just making their way through hell and uh, as it was, Moat said, get up against the wall, stay quiet. Maybe they want to notice us. And that is where we ended. So let's find out who our characters are and uh, then find out what's going to happen with these ghosties. Let's start at the back end and work our way left. Sabine, introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. Hi, my name is Sabina. I use any pronouns, and I am playing Zar, who uses he, him pronouns. Zar is an inksmith, and um, that means he's a journalist, writer, investigative journalist. And maybe sometimes he writes poetry, but that, that is neither here nor there. Um, he's not very good at keeping quiet, um, but, uh, you know, maybe he will this time because this seems interesting enough. 
So um, yeah, there's a lot more I could tell you about Vizar, but I think uh, I won't start at the beginning. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Next up, Jen, introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. Hi, my name is Jen. I use the she, her pronouns. I am playing Funara, who also uses she, her pronouns. Uh, Funara is, you know, you, you could take it or leave it when it comes to being able to be quiet for Funara. Uh, not, not below average, not above average, just average. Uh, she is a Azurite, which means that she is like a traitor, but in a religious way she does the business does the business i like that phrase next up we know him well but let's hear about the character rich you bet i am playing armitz armitz fleck who is a legend which is the priest uh the drow priest to the moon goddess limye and uh yeah he's uh he's never been to the the tunnels or the vermison stuff so this is a whole new world for him he's very excited a whole new world last but not least jan introduce yourself to us about your character my name is jan he him pronouns uh, i'm playing zordon uh also he him pronouns um uh, zordon is a knight uh which is a sort of like a it's it's the 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 police force for the the northern dogs which is eh, mostly bar centered <laughs> um <clears throat> and before uh, he joined uh the knights he was a duelist and uh and and and, and the drug addict and honestly wasn't doing well he's still um and recently he's been he's been having some weird dreams about men underwater, ladies with three faces. It's weird. <laughs> and the little things coming and, up and, out and, of his back. And and, and 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 spiky demon things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And so we focus back in as our crew huddle back up against the wall of the tunnel. We see the little push cart put, put, putting down the track. That large translucent figure on the back uh, of it shoveling out spikes. And you could hear now that it's gotten closer. Nail them in, boys. Nail them in. And maybe seven, eight of the folks behind the drow grabbing the spikes out of the air, push placing them as another swings a hammer. Oddly enough, you would swear you hear the thunk of the hammer, the ring of it, shortly before the hammer actually hits. As they drive in to the already laid rails, there's a momentary bluish glow. They begin moving, they get abreast of you close yes bizarre um this is probably a bad idea i bet <laughs> it is i'm really curious about what is their worst fear Ooh. I just you know I, I that a non-rolled skill i bet it oh is. this is a rolled this is a oh, rolled is... uh, advancement investigate plus occult to, to oh. deter, determine what most people are scared of around these parts mm. ah. and then channel it into myself and i can um when i embody that fear with your acts clothing or speech but i don't want to do this i just want to know what it is all right well let's roll Invest yeah. one to start, investigate plus a cult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where's the dice roller? Sorry, I sh I consistently forget to open it's up in the lights dice and roller. Veils. I found it. It's loading. So, yeah, I do get three dice, right? Three um, dice. I don't think this falls into conspiracies. No, I don't think so. Either. Either. Oh, gosh, English. It's a terrible language. 
easier than most others, but still it's pronunciation, right? Let's see how that goes. Oh, there's an eight. Mm, all right. With an eight, you're not going to suffer stress as you, which is lucky. I should mm -hmm. tell you, by the way, you are risking mind at this particular one. Um, yeah. As you feel from them, this fear that they won't get done, mm -hmm. that the work won't get finished, that they, no matter how fast they go, no matter how, how much, how hard, how long they work, it won't get done. It won't, it won't ever be done. And the man standing on the cart his fear is of the supervisor the foreman his whip his cold cold hands okay that's scary and and poor socks though right they move very close by. You're pressed up against the wall, but the nearest one, no more than six or seven feet away. And I don't know, Fanara, have you ever seen a ghost before? Let's ask my decision maker. Yes. Ooh. Spire is known to have ghosts, and the Vermisian line in particular is said to be haunted, but where, where did you see a ghost? Hmm. Probably, uh, probably the river one time. Hmm. Seems like a ghostly place. Mm, definitely. Just late night walk, not digesting food kind of a thing. These, that lone ghost, you had kind of felt the, the mournful feel of it, as though it were looking for something lost. These, these give off these waves of weariness, these waves of fear, not, not causing fear, but fear that they themselves are possessed by. One moves very close to you, Aramitz, his hammer rising up only a few feet away from you. And as it begins to descend, you could feel the, the wave of fear that comes from them. What, have you ever encountered ghosts before? Or is this all new to you? I think Ermitz has encountered ghosts. There are a couple of haunted graves that he's tended, he has tended to. And the first time he ran into a ghost was when he was a, a hunter during his durance. Uh, he came upon the ghost of someone that had been killed by an animal that Aramitz was sent after. Mm. And it haunted him until he was able to fell the beast. Oh. Did you feel that by felling the beast that you had, had put him to rest? It was, it was my hope and prayer. It was one of the first things to lead me to the order. To becoming a priest, to understanding my part and how I can serve Lemie. And I think that part of your training was to learn that indeed ghosts, if you can find that which binds them to this world and break that binding, they, they can pass on, they can find the Lady's Grace or whatever uh afterlife they are due to and so seeing these toiling away knowing that they have almost certainly been toiling for nearly 200 years is yes 
Is yeah. there a number of any sort or an identifying mark on the the push cart that they're utilizing? That's a good question. I think that you see um, a name written on the side of it. Um, it says, pull up, yes. Fathom line number three. And you can piece together and kind of going off of the Polaris system, you may know well enough, the Fathom line is this particular railway that Polaris is on. Each of the, you know, there's several lines in the network. Right. Okay. Just tuck it in my pocket. All right. Now, we had had Moat tell you to, you know, she covered up her light. Aramitz, had you turned yours off? Had you covered it? I think I cover it. I kind of like the idea of him having to cover it. Mm. And so as this hammer comes back and begins to descend, it is so close that in the light, for a, you know, as you've got it covered, there's still that kind of glow coming through your hand. Are you, are you covered with your hand? Is that? Yes. Okay. Still that slight bit of glow. And you see for that moment, as it is so close, the light almost flares slightly. And the hammer's head kind of warps for a moment, almost like going in and out of existence before it descends. You hear the ringing and then the hammer hits. That light blue glow. They keep moving getting just a bit past you. When, Sword, you were at the front of this group, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, as per usual. You hear down the tunnel from, which you, from where this came, you hear voices moving towards you. You hear one of them say, oh, I, I can smell them. There's a, there's a pack of them up here. Get the things ready. Uh, this will be a big fix. A big fix. Uh, we're not alone. <laughs> you whisper that back to your crew? Yeah. Moat says, fuck. What, you see. We... Wait, wait, wait. You, you know what's coming? <laughs> I'm not sure. But it may be. Spirit junkies. Okay. And that is when you see carrying a light for Prowl. It's hard to tell what, what gender they might be. They're kind of just wrapped in rags and dirty clothing. Um, but you can see that they're carrying nets. And as they're moving, one of them has taken out this uh, kind of jug and is dousing these nets with what's in the jug. They don't seem to have noticed you. But they're moving up quickly as one of them says, oh, it's a whole bunch of them. Let's see if we can get a straggler. So they're not coming for us? No. No. They're... <clears throat> they're gonna feed on the spirits. Right. Is this something that, like... Is that bad? <laughs> not if they don't notice us. And... Maybe they'll... And the group of ghosts have moved a little down as this group of four, one of them rushes forward towards the last in line as it's raising the hammer and casts the net towards it. You see the net land over the top of it and it kind of looks around confused, struggling against the net. And then the four 
just rush towards it. Aramith, you doing anything? Yeah, I, I think Fanara might see the Aramiths is thinking about stepping in there and doing something. Like stopping these this travesty, this weirdness. Mm, well there's only four of them, and we've got a sword. In. But uh hmm. and a gold set. And a Thursa. And a gold set. And a oh, Thursa. Wow. Yeah. yeah we got them outnumbered. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, this is this is gross. I'll I'll break ranks with you. Cool. Uh, yeah. So I, there's a glance. He checks in with Fenara, <laughs> and the two of us step out together. Yep. Uh, I'll I'll tap Swordner Thurza on the chest like, like, like <laughs> before taking off. Just be like. It's like I think Zordon will definitely be like just look and then like oh, oh we're doing this <laughs> and like following like uh, I'm coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm coming with you. I, I'm definitely coming with you because I don't really uh, like seeing that either. So yeah, seems legend. If if our priest says this, not much should happen. Then I'm I'm with him. Yeah. You hear Moat goes oh, booms as you step out. I do you <laughs> uncover your lights. Yes. Airman? Of course, that's nice and impressive. The light shines out as you see the four of them kind of whip around. You can see that they're already, they have these kind of little stilettos that they look like they were going to begin poking into this uh, spirit that is held. The group of other spirits has continued its work and gone down a little distance. It's still not far away, certainly still in sight as the leader of the four of them, uh, of the spirit junkies, turn. What the hell are you doing here? You need to stop what you are doing. I'll start he, striding forward towards him. He turns his stiletto towards you. Look, we need our fix. You don't belong here unless you want to get hurt. You better keep moving. These ghosts it, were people once. Now they're a high. Yeah. I can tell you from experience that it's not good to chase a high. Especially not if you have to like do this for it. It's like his chase eye. It's trouble widen a little at the armored man that steps out of the darkness and seeing that they're kind of uh, outnumbered he looks at his companions cheese it! And they grab the net and begin trying to run off with this Hold spirit. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stop them. Alright. Um, I I think uh, we'll go Aramids, Fenara, Bazaar, Sorden as our order, since I think that's kind of our our stepping out order. Fair. Um, yeah. Aramids, what you doing? Man, I like I want to attack these guys, but I definitely want to stop them. They need to not do this anymore. I need to... Yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much. You are very smart and you help me make decisions. Uh, I'm going to pursue them and try to cut that net. All right. Let's have uh let's do the pursue first. I think that that is our more interesting thing to have happen. Okay. So uh, let's do pursue. And this is definitely low society. <laughs> All right. I have mastery in pursue because of the tower. Uh, so uh, that is one die for trying, two dice for pursue, right? Is it two dice or is it it's no, two mastery. dice? Yeah, mastery. mastery means that you have a knack, right? Or does it mean that you have two dice? Sorry. I think it I means a knack. Right? Uh, so I need to come up with a knack for uh -huh. pursue. No, mastery. Mastery is just clear across. Oh, right. 
roll another d10, mastery doesn't stack, but you can only use it once. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah, mast mastery means another d10, sorry. Okay, no, it's okay. I'd rather talk it through and make sure we're all on the same page. So uh, one die for trying, two dice for the mastery pursue, one die for low society, four dice. Correct. Um, uh, all right. And my best is a 10. A yeah, 10. That's pretty darn good. Yay. Um, you reach and uh, you can, uh, is your thing to grab the net away from them? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that seems fair. Then you reach out, you grab and perhaps because he's surprised you grab the net away and strip it from his hands uh the one that's carrying it as he sort of howls no Banara, what are you doing hmm. let's see well if the if the ghost is getting plucked out of the net and i don't have that much excess to do i'm going to move around with Goloset to cover a flank and basically make it look to these folks as though they can't, you know, get around us, get to the side or back of us. Um, so positioning yourself for defense. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Bizarre. Right overwatch. <laughs> Bizarre is, I'm keeping an eye out on the ghosts because um, Muri seemed to be a bit worried about them. And also I want to keep an eye on the, on the fight, A, to help someone if it need be, and B, to grab one of these stilettos mm. if one falls down or happens to be close enough to me to, for me to grab it. But I don't want to run into one because I've, I've got very intimate knowledge of knives right now and I feel that this is not an experience I need to um, repeat anytime soon. Looking down towards the retreating ghosts, you note that the one on the top of the cart has kind of looked back and is looking in your direction. I will uh, then um, I use my I think I have belt or something uh, and I will channel the uh, supervisor here a little so that he remembers the whip of the, the supervisor's whip and, and, and continues in his task, right? Okay, so you're going to try and like tell him, direct him towards, yeah. continue mm -hmm. what he's doing. All right, Yeah. because as you begin doing that, he's like, lazy lubber back in line, but you... Uh, you can do, I think here is going to be a compel. Mm -hmm. um, plus a cult, yes. Cool. And you have your fear thing, which will mm -hmm. let you have mastery. Nice. Okay, that means I get four dice. It does. Ooh. -hoo. Let's see how that goes. Plus the ten as well. So. You see him sort of stiff and <sighs> drive on, drive on, hurry, hurry. The line has to be finished. And he sort of turns a crank on the cart. You hear the put, put, put speed up as the ghosts around him begin actually picking up their weary pace, continuing down the line, swording. You know the look of a junkie who is desperate for a fix. And that leader with his stiletto, you're pretty sure he's going to dive forward and try and get it. You can't say for sure if he's going to go after Aramids or just going to go straight for the spirit. But he's froggy and about to jump. Do I think I can get there in time? I think you can. Then I'm going to try to tackle him. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't we... I think this is a pursue. Because you're attempting to get there in time. Yes. Low society. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's three right now. Uh, I will say, Fanara, you and Golaset are very much in position to help with this. Yeah, we'll do it. All right. So four die. Hey, ten. Hey. Rolling good today. Getting this time. Right? the dice. <laughs> so you leap forward. You say your intent is to tackle him, eh? Yeah. And I think that uh, with Fanara and Golaset, probably Golaset is going to like move, shift a little so that, you know, you've got a better path and he's so, that guy is sort of cut off a little as you slam into this person, knocking them to the ground. The stiletto falls, hitting the ground with kind of a bluish spark. Um, and the guy under you is struggling and he is, I mean, like, wildly trying to fight you biting at you uh, yep. but his comrades are breaking and running that's okay I'll keep this guy pinned down <laughs> Aramich you have a spirit in a net what do you do with the spirit in a net it is looking kind of wild and fearful and you can see that it's you can feel an energy growing up in in it i've dealt with ghosts before i wouldn't aramitz wouldn't call himself skilled but at least he he knows enough to understand a bit he needs to know what what binds it right what it's afraid of or what is keeping it here when... if you're wanting to free it from this mortal plane yes i mean theoretically you could just let it out of the net and it probably would go chase down its cart uh, or right. it could go wild and attack people here yeah i don't want either of those to happen so i think i would like to try to understand what binds it here okay i think that's going to be Fix plus either a cult or religion. I like that. Uh, that that is a cool combo, and I have fix and I have religion, so that will be three dice. All right, um, Vizar, you might be in a position to help with this if you wanted. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I know what the ghost's afraid of, so I could uh, convey this at least to Aramis. So maybe I say it aloud. Does that yeah. obviate the need for a roll? Or I'm I'm perfectly happy to roll, but I don't want to roll for a thing if we if if it's a thing that's already been mm. earned by another PC. And I no, 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 no. She's just our uh, Vazar is just aware of what it's fearful of. This is going to give you insight in how to break that bond. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Perfect. I just didn't. I don't want to snake somebody's cool powers. That's mm. all. No, no, no. Sorry, right, snake is a term that i learned from pizza delivery it means take away someone else's thing that should be theirs i don't know if that is a fit i don't think it's offensive hopefully i like, think so except maybe to snakes perhaps. what is the word snake, snake? Uh, yeah like snake. snaking something from somebody hmm. i mean okay yeah i'm on the behalf of the snakes i'm no i'm not <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a total snake fan, but... justice warrior <laughs> yeah. i mean my phrase is far oh. more offensive where i usually say stepping on my dick <laughs> Yeah, that, that, I mean, how is that even, that if you did that, that would be offensive. Uh, I mean, it'd be impressive, but to me, I, like, I think I thing. wanted to do Snake Justice Warrior now, though. <laughs> um, cool. You have oh. four dice, Rich. All right, I'm going to roll it. Oh, that's that fourth die was just a six, but I got an eight earlier, so a success. Excellent. Uh, so no stress. God, y'all have been lucky in this little encounter. Uh, it's, it's so good. These ghosts like us. With Bazaar's insight of the fear of never getting done, that this, you know, we have to hurry. We have to get finished. Their work is done, Aramis. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. 
I, I think what Aramis does is he finds a, a fissure or a hole in the net and he reaches in to just cup the face of the ghost, probably feeling the icy. He says, your work is done. You may pass on. You have toiled enough. Please. And with your light shining down for a moment as your hand touches it. And when you first reached, it was almost like your hand was going to pass straight through. But with the light shining on it, for a moment you feel that person. You feel their fear. And then his eyes widen. I can rest. Yes, your toil is at an end. Your job is finished. You've done well. We're finished. And as he says this, he sort of fades from view. Lynette collapses down. He is gone. The stiletto. The guy struggling with you, Zord, goes, no, you son of a no, bitch. He, he, he dropped the stiletto, so. <laughs> yeah. No, I, this is, no, the son of a bitch is that his fix is gone. Um, but you, Vazar, have no problem going over and swoop, picking up the stiletto, if you wish. Uh, are you doing it surreptitiously, or are you pretty blatantly just going over and grabbing it? I think, uh, well, I have no sneak or anything, no steal, so I'll just do it like, like this is what I do. Yeah, sure. I have every right to do this. You pick it up, and what you note is that it has a, it's hollow, mm -hmm. um, almost like a straw. And you can yeah. see at its hilt, uh, there is a, almost like a place you would put your mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I know how that's, that's where I, I'll just keep it right now. I'll put it in my pocket, put it in my gear because I don't have a lot of gear. So, yay. As the spirit has disappeared, the guy in your clutches and well under your control, sort of, sort of uh, and the fight goes out of him. What are you doing with him? Uh, I think, and like I'm sort of just sitting on top of him, like pinning him down. Like, look, it's not a good idea. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it feels wonder. Like I, I can't imagine what a, a ghost tastes like. I don't. I don't know what you do with them. But man. I needed that. And you're going to need it again and again and again and again. Again. Yeah. And uh, you know what? You're going to need more and more. So what are you going to do? You're going to kill me? No. He kind of looks surprised. As behind you, you hear Moko be better for him if you did. Hey. <sighs> Look, I can't force you to stop taking... Do I'm just telling you, this doesn't look easy to get to your fix. Like, you need a net and whatever, like, you need four people to do this? It's, it's, it's a lot of work. And if you need to keep doing it more and more, it's all you're going to be doing. There's nothing like it. Man, there's nothing like it. I mean, I'm sure there's nothing like... Chasing after ghosts all the time. But surely there's some other stuff that you could be doing as well. But hey, in the end, it's up to you. 
do you let him up? Yeah. I'll, I'll probably like if we even help him up, like he kind of is all defensive posture <laughs> and looking scared. Kind of starts backing away. Look, uh, I don't know who you people are, but uh, be be careful down here. Thanks. We will. And my name is Sorden, by the way. If you ever want to look me up. <laughs> Tonks. Nice to meet you, Tonks. And uh, yeah. Real pleasure. You, you also be careful. <laughs> There's dangerous people walking around, you know? <laughs> yeah, looks like. Yeah, you might want to talk to a priest or someone about that, finding that fix. Just maybe find something else with, to do with your, with your life. Yeah. Uh, my, and he runs. <laughs> Hi. And begins disappearing into the darkness. The Aramids, of, yeah. Aramids will wrap up the net. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your words. So, ah. Such wisdom. <laughs> I mean, you're complimenting yourself now. Like, I mean, I did, I was literally just copying what you told me. And yeah, I remember. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Aramid. You notice that uh, not only do you have the dead, but that jug that they were dousing it with the liquid from, it's also laying there on the ground. Hmm. Uh, I'll pick up the jug and s sniff. Moat, what is this? They coated the net with it. I imagine it's eh, probably like holy water. Eh, spirits don't have a form. If you don't have something that'll yeah. Yeah, a whole contain them. They would just go right through it. That's, you know, uh, they're intangible, you know. Right. Well, it's a clever bit of something. I told you to just stay up against the wall. We could have let them do their thing and be gone. Now they're going to run off. There's no telling who they're going to let know we're here. I'm sorry, Mo. I couldn't let that happen. <sighs> Holy rollers. <sighs> well. One. Do what I say. Let's try to stick with that in the future. What, what what could the ghosts have done to us if they were if they are so intangible? Could they have possessed us? Do they have any experience with us? They can possess people. Oh, yeah. They they are capable of hurting people as well. Hmm. There is a, an energy. I've known I've known people to be caught by ghosts and withered, aged, die. Good work spooking them, bizarre. Oh, well, you know, everybody's afraid of something. I can't believe they listened to you. As I said, everybody's afraid of something. You see Even her ghosts. sort of nod with a little bit of the only bit of appreciation for the group that uh, that she seemed to have here of, you know, well, that was well done. All right. We're going to try to avoid any more trouble. Please, 
just stay close. We're going to move. We're very good at, at avoiding trouble. <laughs> so he's definitely standing there with a face of like, <laughs> like he's not saying it, but he's basically his face is just say, saying like, can't make yes, any but, promises. But Vizar is totally straight faced when he says that. And that is kind of a bit of an accomplishment in of, of himself, but he has a very trustworthy face. <laughs> We're going to continue on the line for a little ways. It will be weird. Let's try to minimize our problems. Then I'll find us a conduit door. Stay close. Come on. And a little exasperated, she begins leading you down, down the line. You travel for a good half an hour. Uh, as you begin to notice uh, the end of that, um, it's very humid here very wet and you're hearing drops of water and it takes you a little bit of a while to notice that this section of track you've entered those drops of water the sound of them are coming from above you you look around it you can see from the floor drip up to the ceiling, splash. From the floor, trip up, splash on the ceiling. She goes, we're on an edge of something here. This could, watch your steps. Continue a little ways forward. Sordon. I think I would like for you, if you would be so kind, to roll me a pursue plus a cult. Okay. Well, I have pursue. <laughs> Let's have a look. That's a five. Mm. I see. You following, you know, behind boat, you step there again, has been all of this moisture and water around. And as you step down into one of the several puddles that are here, the your puddles. foots, yes. On the ceiling, right? The puddles. Uh, there's puddles on the floor, uh, okay. <laughs> puddles on the ceiling. Puddles, puddles <laughs> everywhere as you step and suddenly your foot, your leg, all the way to your hip, you descend down into this puddle. Would you be so kind as to roll me a d6? And we're going to be applying this to your ma uh, to your blood armor. All right. That's a five. Take five stress as your weight and your momentum moves you forward. And I'm going to roll a d10 here real quick. Oh, I don't even know if I need to roll a d10. I, I mean, I, I think so, but... No, nope. you I still, still are at zero, zero total. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think probably, you know, you, you kind of move and, you know, for a normal person, this could very likely have ripped their hip out of socket. But you managed to kind of catch yourself as you're, you're moving. Thorza moves over to grab hold of you. As then very suddenly you feel yourself lifted and moving up towards the ceiling. <laughs> Thorza grabs you, holding you down. Uh, Bizarre, what do you do? You see this. This seems uh, rather occult related, I, I think. Yeah. I mean, uh, perhaps weirdly weird magic uh, stuff in here. Um, I mean, let me let me just look at my 
That's probably not helpful. That's also not helpful. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, that's probably also not just so very helpful. I don't know if that's helpful. If I can do a thing here that would help me. Oh yeah, of course. I will, in this instance, I will use my next, next logical step because there has to be an inscription, right? On the wall that I can decipher. Ooh, there's an interesting thought. All right, so next logical step. Oh, says, oh, alternative facts, there we go. No, no, that's no, the no, next no, logical sorry. step that I'm looking for. Oh, say, all right. Once per session I can declare something is present in the world, that if it would be there in a schlocky pulp fiction novel, and in a schlocky pulp fiction novel, there would totally be an inscription on the wall that would tell the protagonists how to reverse this effect. All Wouldn't right. There? So uh, it's, it's, if the GM or gr uh, group doesn't agree with the ability has no effect, mm -hmm. but uh, I'll say that I, I think that it's likely that there, you could see something written on the wall. Does everyone agree? I think this is a fun scenery setting building moment. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, you see written on the wall um, for track transfer, push button. And you begin looking around and you indeed see an overgrown with lichen and moss and a bit of slime, a button. I will then declare, hey, I'm doing a track transfer. And then I hit the button because there's a button. Come on, who wouldn't hit the button? You push your hand into it. There's a squelch as the slime and ick kind of... Um, Should have told Loris to do it. <laughs> <laughs> splashes a bit on you. Uh, but as you push the button, whoop, sword, you fall back down from where... Thorza has been holding you. I fall on top of her. <laughs> oh. oh! Are you all right, Sir Sorn? I'm, well, actually, my breastplate is dented, but uh, are yes, you Yes, I okay? know. I believe that was on my head, Sir Sorn. <laughs> are you okay? I believe so. A little squished. Could you perhaps roll a bit to the sides, Sir Sorn? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, as you help her to her feet, Moat looks back and says, Amateurs, I think I found the door. What? You were on the wrong track, Sorry. What? What does that mean? <laughs> that is a very good question question i have an answer for it but it would take a long time to explain the metaphysical ideas behind the tracks down here i don't Look, understand there's a either sword <laughs> this is not this place here is a bit thinner than than ordinary spire is ordinary is so sometimes you will have um, magic occult supernatural effects that seep through from around where they are more common and if you're on the wrong track then you go towards that world and you don't we don't want that right now i mean we, want, we might want to eventually just to see what it's like but not right now okay does that does that make sense no you hear a screech as moat pulls open a large metal door on the side of the tunnel and motions you all to follow her. I, having extended it out, collapse this thin metal collapsible pointer thing like you would use in a lecture with a very giant chalkboard and just go, hmm. all right, then carrying on. Following her through this door off of the main tunnel, you enter what is clearly like a maintenance access shaft, much smaller, about five foot across, maybe seven to eight feet tall. Um, all along its sides and across the ceiling are pipes, and uh, you could even hear kind of a rush of things moving through the pipes. 
Not sure if it's water. Maybe it's water. Who could say? Uh, but as you enter, she looks down one way and the other, and after a second of hesitation, this way, and uh, turns left. You begin following her for quite a little while until you enter into a chamber. Uh, there is a desk and a chair, all of them covered in mold and slimes. Uh, there's also a uh, kind of a dashboard of levers and uh, a wheel, um, which she moves over to and turning the wheel uh, at the back of the chamber, you see a door, the wall sort of slide, giving you a door. She says, uh, all right, I'm going to move through here. The last I heard of the Mizians, they were, they had an outpost not far away. One of the old generators is there, and they siphon off power to use for various things. Hopefully you'll meet someone there that'll be willing to help you. Very well. She, leads you, she leads you in. And uh, again, another one of these service passageways. Um, and you continue on for 10, 15 minutes. But you're noticing that the walls and the floor are cracked here. Mostly hairline sort of cracks. And that's when she reaches a spot and you see her sort of hold up. Oh, oh. Oh, great. Yeah. Sword, you're up front, I believe. You move up beside her and see that the passageway ends at a sudden drop. A crack has opened here. It's a big one, apparently. About 40 feet to where you see the passage ex uh, to the other side. She's shining the light, but it does not penetrate the darkness down this crack. But from below, you do hear maybe it's water rushing, but if so, it's doing it in a strange rhythmic way. Whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. Heartbeat. Uh, looks like we're going to have to go back, I guess. Yeah. Unless someone has a way across, I think you're right. I can't jump that far. <laughs> the, all of you have now moved up to where you can see um, the crack. Well, um, and throw a rope or something. I look to Fanara. I do have some rope, but securing it at the other end is what's most difficult. <laughs> well, I'll find us an alternate route. And she turns around and begins moving back down the way you went. You travel for 10, 15 minutes. And she goes, shit. As sword, you see there's a crack about 40 feet. You hear a sound, sounds maybe like water. Mm -hmm. Whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. Oh. Is this the point we just left? I don't know. Is this... There's no way I missed the door. Um, she turns, moving back very carefully. 
following uh, the passage. Wait, wait a yeah. second, because this is obviously not how it should be, right, Mo? Not unless I miss the door. Then let me look. Let me look at the this abyss. Maybe I can figure something out. Okay, I've I've uh, read stuff in the library, so maybe. Be there careful. Is something. Sometimes when you stare into the abyss, it stares back into me, and I will wow it with my scintillating personality. <laughs> my wink at her. Let's secure you first, my lad. <laughs> Yes, I just want to, yeah. Yes, securing me for Nara. Thank you. That is a very good idea. Yes, and I and I shoot Gerald a little eh, eh, look as I tie a rope around Vizar's mouth. I just want to look at the abyss, see if there is anything that could help us, because this is not clearly not very natural. Okay. So I don't have a move or anything for that, except for the nose for trouble that would tell me what's weird or out of place here, but this seems weird and out of place. How about we do an investigate plus a cult? Yep. I don't think conspiracies come in here, Anybody right? Anybody feel like helping? No, I wouldn't think so. Fonara's helping. All right. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and we're probably looking at a threat to... I'm going to go with mine because we found ourselves in an alternate space. Okay, let's see how that goes. Oh, well, this is, it's a six, so it's not too bad, but I will take stress. As will Fenora. Oh, sorry. Um, let's roll a, let's see, let me, I believe I am at a, yep, D6. All, do, everything on the Fathom line is a default six stress. Wow, okay. What do we got? Okay, let's roll, it's a five. Ouch. Ouch, yes, indeed. How are we looking on stress? Three. Now I said a five. Fanara set a five. I'll roll Fanara real quick. Fanara's taking stress, fallout, and I'm sorry. you're equal. So, Vizar, you are not. Uh, I've, okay, I have a three, but uh, yeah, okay. I don't, oh, um, okay. Then you're, you have a three. Oh, and yeah. actually, I'm sorry, I've got to roll under. So, you didn't take it either, Fanara. Uh, you're fine. All right. All right. You're both fine. Okay. Um, but a success. Um, you are correct that this is something very strange. And looking down into this abyss, despite the appearance of being completely bottomless, you're certain it is not. But more importantly, now that you've taken the time to kind of peer down, you can see about five feet below where you're standing, there's an opening on the oh. side that you're mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I will convey this information to the rest of, of the group because I'm pretty sure that Fonara won't just let me climb into this. I might not... I Damn it, for the story, right? I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, that could be our way forward. I think right. that Moat should get the first look. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And, I'm, uh, I'm not moving, from, but I'm like, from, from my equipment, I'll, I'll get a sort of a, a piton screw Ooh. kind of a thing. Excellent. And have, have Gola work that down into the floor as... Ruff, mm -hmm. ruff. He screws it in as Moat says, all right, uh, hold on tight to me here. Uh, I'm just going to take a look. And what she's going to do is go head first to basically just peek down. Um, 
And so holding on to the rope, her feet still basically like upside down hanging on the ledge, she'll peek around. This, this might be our way. Um, all right, let me check. And she very nimbly kind of flips around and swings up into. Looks like it's all clear. We've got a passage. All right. Uh, wait, I, I, I don't think I can make the same flip. <laughs> you don't have to make the flip, Sorden. You just have to, with the rope, have your feet braced on the edge and then swing downward. It'll hold you. I guessed it. I, I paid for the good rope. We're going to do a group action here. Ooh. Um, so, for our group action, which is always, I think, an interesting little thing this does. Um, we're going to have everybody uh, at risk of stress, but we're going to have one person do the lead. Um, and this would be pursue um, plus, I'm going to go with either low society, occult, or commerce. Who would like to take the lead? Hmm. What, was it, what was skill? Aramids, maybe? I mean, um, these are designated hunty person. That's true. Yeah. And I also happen to be really good at it right now, so. Yep. All right. So looks like you've got four dice. It does look like I have four dice. Cool. I'm gonna do it. Apologies. No. Oh, seven. All right. Success at a cost. Take at a cost. I think there's going to be some scrapes and bruises as people move across, but everyone will get down. Rich, roll us a d6. Go and get blood and armor. Okay. Here we go. Five. Uh, I'm sorry. Looks like everybody's in some troubles now. Um, I'll start with uh we'll start with the czar. You're taking fallout. Fanara. Yeah, pretty sure I do. You're taking fallout. Arabitch, you're still at zero, aren't you? Oh, no, you haven't put yours in yet, have you? Now I'm at five. Ooh. You're taking fallout. And Sorden, you're at five. Really happy I'm You're good. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, you all make your way down to this passage scrapes and bruises galore and uh we're gonna take a break here i think as i come up with our fallouts all right we've made it down to this lower level as moat goes and you see she's sort of nursing her ankle where she took a little bit of a fall getting down here as well and um, what about my Loris? Is she okay? Uh, I think that we find that she, Thorza, and Goliset all made it down here with little to no trouble. They they had no trouble at all. However, you, uh, Aramitz, 
you are tired. Um, you're kind of like, yeah, you know, all of this walking and moving, or maybe not something you're as used to anymore. And you've, you've done all this extra bit, uh, uh, kind of as the hunter at all. So you have found yourself to be a bit tired. Um, which means that uh, somewhere during the course of here, if you roll a one and a 10 in the same roll, I can choose what roll you rolled. Bizarre. You scraped yourself pretty badly, and you're bleeding now. Oh, you're leaking. No, Un again. Damn it. Until you get proper medical care, each time you take an action, you'll mark one stress against blood before Ooh. you roll the die. But you don't oh. check for fallout. Okay. Um, how much stress does that take care of? Um, you may all uh, remove, let's see, we're all getting minors, so uh, suffering, uh, remove three. Everybody can remove three stress. Okay. Who takes a fallout. And you, my dear uh, Fenara, you are taking, let's see here. Oh, boy. Which one did I like? That's the one I like. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, as you swung around, took a little crack to the head. Oh, boy. And you're currently stunned. Um, it's going to take you a bit to gather your senses. And uh, until you have a chance to rest or uh, get, a, get an opportunity here to, to deal with it, you cannot use the fight skill to earn additional dice uh, for the remainder of the situation. Do you even have fight? Yes, I do. Currently, you cannot use fight. All right. Um, but Moat says, let's take a minute. And uh, she sort of slumps down, rubbing her ankle and bringing out a flask to have a drink. I mean, you think it's water. <laughs> huh? Aramis. No judgment. We're all friends here. Aramis. Yes. I, the, I am bleeding. Can you maybe... Oh, maybe yes. wrap this up because I don't think I, the, the amount I'm leaking off here right now, I think I cut my leg pretty bad. Ah, uh, then of course, let me see how I can help you. We're, we're all pretty roughed up. <laughs> if you would like to just do regular medical care, that's a fix roll. That's true. Uh, we also could do a... Um, Shoot, sorry, trying to find it again. Your spine? Right of respite, yes. Did, could did do that. everyone also remember to remove the the three uh, the, the, for for stress? For, for stress, for <laughs> getting the. Actually, uh, Zordon, yours is still showing 10, so I don't think you removed it, <clears> oh, no, right? No, I, because I didn't get fallout. <laughs> oh, right, that's right. That's awesome. But that doesn't precisely help with the bleeding, right? That just no, helps with stress. Mm -hmm. well, well, the, the right thing rest, is... Yeah, it's healing, so... Anyway. And okay. if we remember okay. correctly, it, you can transfer, uh, transfer three healing instead of doing removal of stress. It can fix a minor fallout. Hmm. Remember we had the... Where I discussed magical sources that... Uh, can also cure fallout rather than removing stress. Three stress will rep rep repair a minor, five would repair a moderate, and seven for a severe, but severes are generally very, very hard to do. Cool. I'm more than happy to use the Rite of Respite. I don't blame you. Everybody cool with that? Then uh, that is what happens. I create a place of stillness and healing. Of course, I bring our NPCs in, even though they did much better than us. 
uh, <laughs> much better than we did. And even though there is no fallout for Zordon, I do think that he could use at least a little bit of respite. Mm-hmm. So I create a recuperation session, holding vigil over them. Uh, I think I create a comfortable healing environment by, oh gosh, maybe singing them a hymn, just like a soft hymn, almost like a lullaby type of hymn to bring some calm and to bring the light of them. Yay, as it shines from my stone here in the dark vermicent vermicent tunnels. Excellent. Do you have to roll for that or is it automatic? It is automatic. That is fantastic. Then I would like for you to pick one of your other players then as this is going on and you are going to, as this respite comes on, you're going to feel Lumiere moving through you this healing is taking place. Mm -hmm. She is telling you one of these people, you can tell something lies heavy on their heart. Choose who they are and then ask them what it is and have that conversation. And I will be able to hear you. I'm going to blow by those. Well, we've definitely seen some good stuff from Zordon about, uh, yeah, with with our addiction folks. So I think it should either be Fanara or uh, or Vizar. So I think I'm going to ask Jen to flip that decision maker heads is Fanara, tails is Vizar. came up heads oh then it is Fanara. Fanara. Hmm? Limbier guides me to understand that something troubles you what is More it than my trouble? head. Yes. <laughs> oh, I just. Uh, hmm. Now, I, at first, I was like, man, I'll have something. I know it'll happen. And now I'm like, uh. I know. I hate when I have those like, wait, I had an idea and then it went away. Yep. It's I just worry that I've made a terrible mistake. Old regrets. It's it's nothing that I haven't already worried about. What can I do to help ease your burden, my friend? I don't know. Uh, get to fix the whole world? Uh, <laughs> don't worry. We'll, we'll speak on this another time. Do you promise? I promise. In the meantime, I can carry a burden. Oh, but I can't use a rope. I should have been a second story artist. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm here for you. Pat your shoulder and then move on. Thank you. Yep. Everyone who wishes, I'm guessing, Aramis, you are allowing people to get rid of a minor fallout if that is their choice. Um, Or you can remove stress to blood or mind. As Moat kind of is watching you with a 
little bit of respect there, Aramitz. And you see that she's kind of rubbed that ankle, but the bruising has, has reduced. Thank you, uh, Aramitz. Of course. I'm happy I could help. I have... Uh, I haven't really been as devout to the lady as I probably should be. It's nice to know she still cares. Of course she does. He squeezes her shoulder affectionately. We should get going. Hopefully, we won't have any more troubles. And she begins leading you down the passageway. You go for quite a bit of time, probably an hour, uh, before you come to an opening where there's a much larger room and you can hear the sounds of machinery humming. Uh, this is probably that generator she had discussed that you were heading toward. And as you enter the room, it is in fact uh, enormous. Uh, 50 foot across the ceiling domes up to nearly 30 feet. In its center, there is a enormous machine that is whirring and throbbing with noise and uh, giving off bluish light inside of glass portals on the side you could see a crackling of blue energy uh and she says oh, well looking around seems we're the only ones here i was hoping we would encounter some of the vermissians now well, we could uh Maybe come on Take a yeah. break or? Well, we can at least look out the door. Uh, down this next passage from here is, well, it's generally a straight shot to, well, where they do a lot of their meetings last time I'd seen. And she moves over and opens the door and steps back in surprise. That's different. And over her shoulder, you look into a beautiful station. It is pristinely clean. Benches, the ticket booth. Uh, but there is a uh, little kiosk, little cart that is pleasantly giving off steam and the smell of coffee. It looks as though any moment people would be coming in wanting to get on the trains. But it is dead silent and not a soul is there. Yeah, that's certainly odd. Let's investigate. <clears throat> that's what you always say. <laughs> yeah, well... Come on, what else are we going to do? Stand here around and then gawk. You have a point. There's nothing else we can do. There's a kiosk. Maybe they have newspapers there. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Well, I do smell coffee. That too, yes. That, that wasn't what I was going for. And I will get Fonara. <laughs> You head in to the station. Anyone who wishes doesn't have to, but those that do, as you step in, again, that smell of coffee, there is the smell and feel of a place that is in use. You know, it's, it's got the, the smell of a bit of smoke from cigarettes and uh, uh, body smell, not unpleasant, but the smell of people. It is as though it was full of folks mere seconds ago, but now completely empty. As you enter, 
you can see that off to the side, there is a platform and the tracks beyond. Um, you can also see that uh, there is at the ticket booth, the big board, which shows the times and the destinations of the train that is to come in. Sword, what are you doing? I mean, I'm, I'm following and I'm just looking around like, <sighs> this place is weird and it doesn't help that our guide is also being weirded out by the things that we're encountering. <laughs> Bizarre, what are you doing? Uh, I think I'm heading for the kiosk to check for newspapers and yeah, yeah. Or maybe I'll I'll just, uh, well, using that, um, what is weird and out, or out of place here move, does that, and it's not a move, it's an advancement. Those for trouble, is, is that even, does that even apply here? Everything is weird. Everything's weird, but let's have you go to the kiosk first. Yeah, and you are, as you arrive, you do see there are newspapers and magazines, but you note all of them are 135 years out of date. Okay, just quick uh, question. Was that before the Elphir invasion? It is not, but it is at the time they were building the Vermisian network. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I grab one of them and just put it in my pocket. I won't read read it now. I don't have time. But uh, just just you know, who knows? Maybe they're. Uh, I don't know. And then I get checked to check. Well, I check out the kiosk and let the others check out. It. All right, Aramis, what are you doing, my friend? I think Aramis sees this as. A bit of a blessing. Instead of some terrible, wretched place beset by ghosts and those who would feed on ghosts, they see the station as it was meant to be. So I, I think he's pretty happy about this. This is way better than what he anticipated. So... Uh, oh. Yeah, he'll rather probably, civilized, isn't it? Yeah, this is quite nice. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Manara, what are you doing? Let's see if I can't find some coffee. Heading over to the kiosk, the steam periodically popping out of the top of the uh, massive urn like coffee maker they have there. Um, pulling across a, Chris, a, a a china cup, you pour up piping hot coffee. It smells magnificent. <sighs> you don't get coffee like this in Spire since the war has been raging. Mm. Mm-hmm. I actually just leave some dread on the counter. <laughs> As you set it down, you hear ching as the cash register rings up the sale. From inside further, close towards where the platform is, you hear a set of footsteps and you see a woman step in from the platform. She's wearing armor kind of a hodgepodge of armor. She also has a flat hat with a small brim. Um, and she comes in. What, what are you doing here? Do you have tickets? Oh, I'm just seeing the sights, treating myself to a lovely cup of coffee, perhaps reading the news. And hopefully meeting with a few friends before going off to the rest of my day. You're not here for the train? No, but my friends might be arriving by train. Who knows? 
Hmm. You can see Moat's eyes have widened as she moves a little closer to you, Vazar. The trade. If we could... Is this actually a station the last train comes to? Uh, it might have been the station the last train came to. We might not precisely be where it started out to be chronologically. Get a ticket. I can get us multiple tickets. Okay. You see yeah, her sure. again rushing over towards the ticket office. Yeah, get me and get all of us tickets. I call after her. I Vizor, I toss you some money and you can just go after her if you'd like. Fine. Um anyone who doesn't want a ticket. Get me two. Would like a Are ticket, you? please. I, oh, I, yeah, I, sure. I guess we'll need one, right? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I get tickets for all of us and two for you for Nara, right? Okay. The woman okay. has moved into the station and moved towards you, Sorton. You are armed and armored. Yes. Are you part of the city watch or one of the black watch? Uh, I'm a member you of know, the order. Yeah, you know you're not a member of the Black Watch, mm-hmm. which is the uh, guards of the council. Yeah, like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in the order of the Kraken Bell. A knight. Yeah. I see. Uh, we don't go to the docks. That that that's okay. That wasn't my destination at this point. I see. Um, train should be here any minute. Good. Then, then we'll get to our destination faster. Wherever it may be. <laughs> you hear in the distance a train whistle. Aramids? You've been enjoying the the beauty and the calm of this and the, I mean, honestly, this woman seems quite civil. Mm -hmm. Uh, What are you doing? Fenara took care of making sure we had a ticket. Vizar is handling the ticket. Just peruse, are there any symbols of Lemier here? Is there anything that will show that she's brought this blessing to us? You, in fact, see many symbols of the solar pantheon. But why don't we have you roll an investigate plus religion? All right. I'll be rolling... Two dice. Okay. I got an eight. Oh, very good. You see mixed amongst these symbols our hidden lady the patron image of Lumiere for the ministry her dark side and as you look up to them you realize this place Almost a warning comes from them. This place is dangerous. Time spent here is dangerous. And perhaps this is when you look over to your friend, Gerald, and see 
he always wears a mask, so you can't really see his face, but I swear his hair looks longer, duller, and his hands seem somewhat withered, aged. Let's see. My friend, I worry that this could be dangerous for all of us. Are you sure we should tarry here? I mean, so far, everything has been dangerous here. Hmm. Don't worry, sir. The train is nearly here. And the woman smiles at you, and her head turns slightly. Bizarre. Set the cup down and look at Gerald. Bizarre, please. I think I'm at a ticket office. I'm not really able. If, do, I, do, do I have to? You, you, Finara, tickets, Finara, look, look at Gerald. And I look, of course. You move over to Gerald. What do you say to him? Gerald, are you well? Gerald, that's who I. That's who I am right now. Yes, Gerald. I, I'm, I'm fine. Fine. Are you possessed? And I'll like take one of his hands in mine and like raise it up and look. Let's leave immediately. Moat, where's, where's the exit that you find most reasonable. As you say that, Bazaar, you've reached the ticket booth. Moat there uh, is uh, at the ticket booth, and as she's bringing out Sten, I, how do I get a, I, uh, three tickets, three tickets, please, and puts her money down on the counter. I think you had brought out money as well. Yeah. No, as you laid your money down, we hear a kind of ching behind it and rotates out tickets from a spool. Interesting. You see Moat grab them. One question. Is this magic or is this technology? Looks like technology. Okay. I mean, it it very much has that feel of clockwork and and machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. No. Well, then, I'll just buy the tickets, which um, Fonara told me to do, and uh, um, I mean, I want a ticket anyway, so. As you turn back to the group, that is when we hear Fonara say that to Moten. Well, we, we have tickets. We can get the train. We should and, leave immediately. In fact, you hear the train close. <sighs> The sound of steam as out of the platform. Uh, if we leave now, we won't see the train. We won't we'll miss the train from now on. A massive engine appears, glowing with blue energies, steam, bluish steam coming off the top of it and around the wheels to the side as it comes into view. It is truly magnificent as it puts on its brakes screech of them as it pulls to the platform the engine moves past you see the ornate cars behind it as it comes to a stop the doors open you can hear a bit of music from within rather pretty we need to go. We need to leave. Sorden, let's go. Yeah. There is a. Yes, One. yes. This is dangerous. Limier is telling me this is dangerous. Oh, wait, you don't mean we need to go because we need to catch the train. No, we do not need to catch the train. I'm sorry, I was unclear. We need to get away from this train. We need to get out of this station. Moat says, we, we can get on the train. And the conductor 
says, all aboard. She smiles I've got the, at you. I've got the tickets. Everything. I've got the tickets. Good. Let's keep them, but let's leave. Okay, give me a reason why I would want to leave. Come Cheryl, on. in your with you mm -hmm. holding his hands, Fadara reaches kind of pulls away from you. I what is why is and pulls his mask off, but it's not Gerald. Well, it looks like Gerald for a moment, and then it is someone else. Then it looks like Gerald for a moment, then it is someone else. I, I don't understand. Why am I, why am I here? Cheryl, is that because we need to tend to Cheryl? Cheryl, he had a mission. He asked me. Has have, you have? Who are you? I, I'm supposed to be Cheryl. Oh wow. Well. Okay. I feel like Aramis is trying to maybe try to drag people out of this station. You heading back like towards the tunnels? Yeah. Or? Yeah. I just like I, I, I if if Gerald is not walking, then then I'll pick him up. But other than that, uh, I'm just following everyone else because like Sorn is very lost here now. I was like. D you see Moat go, no, we, I have a ticket. I'm getting on this train. And she is definitely heading towards the platform. I mean, this would be the story of a century, right? We may never get to read it. I'll write it. Uh, how, do you, how will you get it to us through time? Huh? How will you get it to us if you don't live? Maybe as a ghost? Oh, probably not a good idea, huh? Aramis is shepherding folks back and away. Mm. As you see Moat move up to the conductor and hand her ticket to them. Well, if, if we say this is deadly, then we have to take her with us, don't we? We should. Yes, we should. Okay. Come on, Sorden. Let's get her. I mean, if we're there... saying this is totally dangerous, we dragged her into this. Come on, guys. We can't just yeah. let leave her. All right. All right. Also, All right. I want to get closer to the train. <laughs> so the two Cheer. of you rush Cheryl, over. Wait here. <laughs> rush over towards her. Yeah. Um, and as you reach her, she's handing this ticket to the conductor. Sword, you get there. And what are you going to do? I think I'll, I'll just like basically grab the 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 back of her of the shirt and like no. <laughs> Bizarre. This is the first time you see the entirety of the train. It is about a dozen cars as well as the engine. It you cannot see in the windows. Um, there is a sort of blue tinting to them, but you can hear delicate music coming from it. You can hear some voices inside seem to be quite pleasantly chatting. The engine itself um, is steaming up. You could tell it's preparing to leave again shortly. As the conductor looks at you, Sorden, and says, this passenger has given their tickets, sir. You need oh. to release them. They're getting on the train. No. Yeah. Pretty sure she, you, she does. She had, so that was the wrong connect. It's the wrong connection, sir. We'll buy a new one. Mm -hmm. She reaches down towards her belt and pulls out a club. 
like a billy club sort of thing. Release the passenger, sir. We don't want any trouble here, do we? Um... I can do. <laughs> I feel that the knockout punch is not the right move here. Uh, nah, I think I'll just uh, uh, like I'll, I'll, I'll pull pull um, uh, modes back and uh, hand her off to Fazar. Damn it! I, I have a. Hmm? I have okay. an appointment here, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, you want to do that? Okay. I try. Okay. Um, Ma looks at you, Vazar. This is the reason we came to find the train. Yep, yeah, but apparently that train is in the wrong time and we're in the wrong place mode. If you get on that train, you will never leave it and um. you probably die. This is the All wrong right. train. Bizarre, go ahead and roll me a compel. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think this is probably going to be low society. Okay. Whereas you, Sorden, she's coming in swinging. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can roll a fight plus order. I have a question. Yes. Um... I would start with techno babble because I don't really know what I'm talking about, but that never stopped me before, right? I would like to roll this with compound technology because right now I can declare that I have the skill of technology. I'm willing to go with that. Because I feel that that is kind of appropriate for what I'm trying to do here. I think it sounds right as well. Okay, so I'm techno babbling at her. I've got three dice. Techno babble never done that before feels right yeah it's an eight howard how did you do zor i waited until Fizar made the roll okay let's have you make your roll ten <laughs> mm. don't don't look at the other three numbers <laughs> it's a ten mm, and i don't have any nasty fallout on you i can use do i no. No, you do not. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't think that the needle tooth child's uh, not <laughs> going to right help me now. right this moment. No. All right. Are you swinging with your sword at her? Um, I think I am uh, parrying uh, the blow uh, with, with like of, of the. I, 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 like, I don't want to kill this person. Just like no, no. No, I'm, no. <laughs> look. <laughs> she swings this baton towards your head as you quickly come up to parry, and your sword cuts straight through the billy uh, club and puts her off balance as she stumbles uh, on the platform. Bizarre, you say this to Moat as she looks at you. Damn it, I hate you people! And begins following you back. Sorry. You pull her towards Aramis. Aramis, you and Fanara and the rest of the group, you pushed back towards where the door is. You see that while you came in kind of that single door, this is a more like a double Victoria or a like a, what are they, veranda door, you know, the yeah. opening up the window. And looking through where you came through, it seems to show like a little park area, but the symbols are telling you it is a lie. And so as you push your people towards it, you move through the door. Once more, returning to the passageway, looking back, you could see that beautiful station. You could see your friends, the ones that are coming through the door behind you. You could see Sword and Bazaar and, you know, convincing Moat, bringing them back across. 
but that beautiful station is now dripping with mold, covered with slime, and is slowly like rotting away. Whew. Sword. Is the conductor still there? <laughs> the conductor stumbles back from where I, she was. What are you doing? Are you I'm, dealing I'm, with I'm, her or retreating? No, I'm I'm like I'm holding up my hands and going like look, I'm I am a a a knight admiral in in the service of uh, uh, of of the Kraken uh, the Order of the Kraken Bell, and I am taking this person under arrest. So I would uh, prefer uh, your cooperation, please. She holds up the ticket that Moat had given, and says, "The train needs." a passenger and you see her lunge towards you what is your reaction uh, i mean then i'll just hold up my swords and then <laughs> like i was going to try i was trying to de-escalate but look if you're gonna attack <laughs> i would like for you to roll me a resist all right plus order resist. You are risking mind, by the way. All right. That's a nine. Oh, damn it. As she lunges towards you and seems to be ignoring the sword that is pointed at her and sort of leaps in your direction and then in midair stops. As behind you, Bazaar and Moat exit out the door. No. No. I didn't buy the ticket. I didn't buy the ticket. And you see her still in midair move backwards towards the doors of the train. No. I didn't buy the ticket. Into the train. The doors close. You feel steam bellowing up from where the train is now starting to move around you. You can feel the, you can, you can smell the rot. You feel wet droplets begin to collapse around you, Sorden. All of your friends are gone. As you look back into this station, it is a place of death. It is a place of entropy. And the train begins to move away. What are you doing? Uh, I, I need to find my friends. I don't feel comfortable here anymore. Roll me a pursue. Plus, in this case, I think we're looking at a cult. Can we help? You may help. How are you help it? Holding open the door. I mean, you, I told him to come with me, right? I can't and just. You were the away. last out. So as you look across the station, you see Vizar. How'd you roll? So you got three dice. Ten. And, an, and another one, if, if you. If oh, you, know. you got two tens? <laughs> A double ten. In case you move across. Goodness. You feel like the station, like the slime and the things are almost like grabbing at you. And yet you power through moving across this. The big uh, coffee making urn explodes behind you. And the smell is of rot and death. The train whistle blows as the train heads down the track as you dive through the door. Joining your friends in the passageway. I think sort of definitely arrest her. Like, okay, Hermes, you were right. 
The door slams behind you. And from down the passageway, you hear, Excuse me, uh, are you lost? And you see a man uh, dressed in very utilitarian clothes. He has a lot of, uh, like a vest with a lot of tools hanging off of it. Um, my name is, uh, Wall, uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, is Cash. Um, can I help you? Yeah. Are you a Vermissian sage, sir? Well, why, yes, I am, ma'am. Excellent. We have a few things that we'd like to ask you. We've come seeking out someone like yourself. Really? Well, what an odd coincidence. <laughs> Please, uh, you seem to have found... Uh, were you in the station? Momentarily, yes. Ooh, nasty place. You should have gone there. We'll know not to in the future. <laughs> the future, that's a very good one. <laughs> uh, why do you seek the Remisians? Well, uh, we're looking for information about the slivers. Oh. You would need to consult the vault. Correct. Come with me. Very well. He, he makes a motion, subtle. And I'm guessing probably you, Fedara, might be, you or Vizar would be the ones who are most likely to recognize a ministry hand signal. Nice. Um, do you respond with it? Well, I mean, not the exact same one. Any monkey can mimic it. I use the response signal. He, he smiles. Ah, yes, all friends here. Please, follow me. Very well. And he begins leading you down the passage. Bizarre, Aramitz, you've noticed the not Gerald is definitely not Gerald. So A, who is he, and B, where is the real Gerald? Like, my Gerald? You speak to him, you ask him? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, and again, has aged tremendously. It seems a bit addled. I, uh, Gerald, Gerald, I, I, I'm supposed to be Gerald. Yes. Well, you're clearly not Gerald, my good friend. And I put my arm around his shoulders. My dear friend, you're clearly not Gerald. So I was. No, you were not. Oh, you I... maybe thought you were, but you are not. You are somebody else. Definitely. Trust me. I'm a reporter. I know such things. You are not Gerald, you are somebody else. Please tell me who you are. My okay. name's Tandy. Tandy, see? Gerald asked me to be Gerald and I was. He's, sometimes he's a little infuriating. I don't know why I'm here. I have an idea, but uh, don't worry. You'll be safe, sir. 
we'll take good care of you. Look, this is Aramis. He's a priest of uh, Lemier. You can, uh, you can talk to him. Push him oh. towards Aramis because it's clearly not Gerald. Hello, Father. Hello. How long ago did Gerald ask you to help him? It, it, it seems mere moments ago. I see. And where did he ask for your help? Where were you? He and a young lady. I, I met them at a bar. Well, you're traveling with us now. We'll do our best to keep you safe, but please listen closely to us. Where we are is very dangerous. Oh, it seems so. I I'll stay close to you, Father. Very well. And so you follow Kesh. By the way, C H E S H, that's his name. Um, and he will lead you through several passageways into a well appointed living area and library. There are other Vermisian uh, sages here as well. And uh, I'm not going to get into the weeds of how the, this group are happy to work with the ministry. Um, they are more than willing to open up the uh, vault for your study into slivers. Uh, I also brought along a, a fine bottle of liqueur to hand off and, you know, Grease the wheels, as it were. They uh, are very appreciative. <laughs> we don't get into actual spire very often, especially of late. It's been so much turmoil. Oh, my. One of them says, yes, since the Steris returned. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we had such rumors about them, but well, they say that they're doing so many good works. Uh, Still, it makes me uncomfortable. Is that what they say? Well, yes, they've been opening up missions, I hear. Soup kitchens, I've heard. Uh, in fact, I, I've even heard that they've been building housing for the poor. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder where they get that authority. Uh, one can hardly uh, guess. I, I'll tell you, my personal opinion is that, well, anything that uh, helps the poor of Spire is good, but I'm hard-pressed to trust Asteris. I'm inclined to agree. Fascinating. The one that had given you the signals originally, Cash, says, well, what's bothered me is that the ministry is been disrupted so much of late. He says quietly. Yes. I've heard rumors of that myself. They, well, I don't speak as much as I perhaps should. Words I heard last was that I have become quite suspicious of what the Steris are up to. Which seems natural and correct. Hmm. And so you spend a couple of days with these people investigating, learning about the slippers. We'll have that next session. But it will be at the time, after a few days, when you feel like you've gained as much information as you'd like, that a runner comes in um, and the Vermisians, you know, get a bit of news, a little bit of stuff from Spire. But sorry, I think it's you that probably 
will be happy to see there are a couple of newspapers that have come in as well. Um, as you look at one, you see that uh, in one of the broadsheets there, um, they're talking about, in fact, that there is a uh, housing project that is finally open to derelictus um, that is funded by the Steris, free housing for the poor. But it's then that you notice the top of the page, the date. You've been here for eight months. What? And that's where we're going to end. So, a um, couple of little things. One, you have tickets for the last train. You may put them down as a reward, as a part of your things that you have. Each of you have one, plus Fanara, you have two extra. Uh, my extra can go to Moat. She will happily take them. It does mean that you can call the last train when you are in the Vermisian, which will take you anywhere in Spire. It doesn't arrive immediately, but it will arrive shortly. The trains don't always run on time. Yet. Um, that is the reward for our little thing here. You also have fully realized that Gerald sent someone with you who was a faux Gerald. Yeah, well, whether, somebody. whether or I, not he had, you know, was sort of yeah. there with you to begin with, your time in the station. <laughs> is where you had that time job. Mm. And I really need to talk to our, I, I, say, I imagine our time in the library gives me the time to have a talk with Aramis. We can do this next next mm -hmm. session, but I want, I need to talk to him. Rather, yeah, a, well, urgently. What a dick move. <laughs> I mean, it's Cheryl, yeah. He's, he's kind of a dick, but. Uh, Yes, but he's not supposed to be a dick to us specifically. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's I, this is I, going I, to get him a long, boring talk. Maybe it wasn't full on dickish if time shifting hadn't happened. <laughs> it kind of was. He could have said. <laughs> but, but I will look at give him a very disappointed look, a very hurt look. He seems to have earned that. We'll come to find out what happened there next time around. Uh, revelations galore next time around as quite a bit of time has, has happened in Spire. And the Steris do seem to be on the move. Oh, mercy me. So, um, if folks are up for a little stars and wishes, we'll do that. But if we could, I'd love to take like three minutes so I can do a little bio break if folks don't. All right, we're back. And uh, I, I want to start uh, with our uh, stars and wishes by saying, I wanted to make the Vermisian seem very weird. Um, I hope this was a very different type of adventure for us. It was a little railroady, <laughs> um, but... Uh, but uh, I I wanted us to, to get a chance to do sort of the bizarreness of Spire, which we haven't done as much of. Uh, I hope it was fun, but I am willing to hear if there were things you didn't enjoy. So let's start somewhere in the middle. Jen, why don't you lead us off with stars? All right, let's see. Uh, so... So stars for the weirdness and also just some excellent voice work from you again this session, Tyler. Just the NPCs really pop 
when you give them that extra effort. So, so two thumbs up, loved it. Um, I thought that it was very interesting seeing how our different characters approach very weird, unreal situations. Um, from from Fanara's own, I'm gonna do as the Romans do here. That's probably hopefully correct. And and Aramid says, I'm gonna see what the goddess has to say about this. <laughs> to Sordens, I'm lost, and I'm gonna do whatever the most reliable person next to me is doing. <laughs> so that was very fun. So thank you very, very much. Aramid's rich stars. You bet stars. Uh, I've, there's this moment when you as the GM reveal to Aramid's, uh, this is a bad thing. And I struggled as Aramis to express, well, how, like, how do I tell them that this is bad without just saying, she said so. Uh, and I, there are a couple of stars. First, Jin is Fanara, like jumping in that, that trust level of, oh, got your back. And then Sabine is Vizar pushing back. It seemed appropriate for us there to be resistance and so that was cool it felt very cinematic in the push-pull relationship and then Fanar bringing home of like is screwing up your boyfriend so there's my trump card and uh that was pretty cool so that was that whole bit was really good I, I thought that was interesting and stressful and I also felt like I, I was like oh, I feel lost I don't know how is going to pull this off and uh, I didn't have to, so yay. And Zord, the Zordon bit, even though he kind of pushed it back and saying, yeah, I'm just, I'm just parroting what Aram had said, that whole thing with the, like, I didn't see us going that direction. And that was just cool. That was really, really cool. And I think, Tyler, you may have, you may have like prompted it a little bit, but Jan, you really brought it home. So the two of you guys worked together to make that, from a weird addiction uh, scene to showing how Zordon's on the other side of it. And I thought that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And my stars. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Jan, any stars? Uh, I also really enjoyed the, the opportunity to have a talk with a, a currently addicted person. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy that it worked out. <laughs> um, well, as far as we know, um, I, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that. Like, I was like, ah, oh, good. And I was like, yeah, no, you, you did this. You did this to me <laughs> in, in a good way. But <laughs> um, I, I really liked Fizar's enthusiasm. <laughs> the, everything. Look, oh, but we should. <laughs> and and uh, like the, the disagreement whether or not to stay or go. And it was like, because Sorden was like, I, I don't know. Just, oh, but you want to go in both directions. <laughs> Train sounds fun, I guess. <laughs> um. And and yeah, Fanara is just just Fanara is such a smooth talker. It's, it's great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very very much, uh, Sabine. Any stars? Oh yeah, stars for the fake Gerald. That was that was <laughs> awesome. And I loved having that scene with him because like um, yeah, because I feel it showed a bit of how bizarre operates when he's really really angry and hurt. And you don't see it. That's fun, but yeah, because he is. Um, yeah, and then starts to the whole thing with the ghosts. That was that was uh, yeah. I and st stars especially to Aramids for for saying oh, we we can't let these ghost suckers suck eat this ghost basically. I I really like that. And that Fonara was like, yep, I'm with you. That was that was nice. That was cool and. 
and I really love the whole weirdness stuff that when, and that abyss and that heartbeat from down there. Yeah, I love the repetition you did. Like it was word for word the same. It didn't sound like you were reading it. Cause that was that thing. So yay, stars all around. Nice. Thank you very much. And I want to star folks for uh, everybody really leaning into the bazaar and us still seeing the characters through it. I thought that was super, super cool. Uh, Sabine, get to start with you for wishes. Uh, yeah, I wish that I had to get to have this talk with Aramid Svalgero. It's really a thing that, yeah. And that uh, that is, and then I wish that I will have a scene with Gerald where I can express my mm, disappointment, that I'm <laughs> slightly vexed about the whole thing. <laughs> yes, that, that's also a wish and also I think. Yeah, I love the, I love the weirdness. Basically, that's that's, but uh, yeah. Awesome, uh, Jan wishes. Mm. Um, not really. I mean, the uh, I guess the 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 thing I said last uh, week, uh, like. Uh, but it's like this. It was not appropriate to see that in this session. Uh, but like I'd, I'd still like to more officially start on my quest for the grill. Mm -hmm. We will definitely have that once we get back to Spire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like it was like it, it makes sense, but <laughs> fantabulous. Thank you. Um, Rich wishes. Take the easy one. I, I wish Alex were able to join us, uh, even though you pivoted very well, Tyler, with the whole not Daryl. That was weird and wild. Um, yeah, other, other wishes, like this eight month jump, I'm really interested. So I, I wish to explore what happens to our world after eight months. I don't want to gloss it over. So I'm really curious about that. Uh, what would have happened to our people? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I will try and address that. And Jim, wishes? Mm. Oh, let's see. I mean, wish, yeah. I want to see what's been going on with Spire since we've been gone. Uh, holy crap. And... Yep, getting getting Alex looped back in. Oh boy, and seeing perhaps a bit of what uh, what he and Blakely have been getting up to in the meantime. <laughs> um, thank you very much, and I'll say I and Alex, if you're watching this at home, uh, my wish slash hope is that you're fairly pleased with what has occurred here. This goes a little on what we discussed, but uh, I also took it in a little direction of my own. So we will see how all this falls out. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting. We will be returning to Spire uh, with eight months down the road, the series having started their plan. Um, I... The adventure itself is supposed to give our whole party coming back the idea of a, a different spire that they left. I'm not displeased with the idea of one of our party being able to say what that progression was. And that's where Alex is going to fall in to kind of give us that person's view of how they've done things over these eight months. Um, so I think that's going to be fun. So my wish is that this will come together well. Um, thank you all for playing. Uh, I, I found this to be a nifty, interesting, kind of creepy uh, session, and I hope everyone enjoyed it. And Rich, I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Tyler. So thank you, everyone who's been watching and following along. We will continue our journey into the spire and beneath the spire and around the spire next week hopefully with a full staff up oh, jen will not be with us next sunday right because of gen con is correct so we'll do a hot swap of uh, an alex for a jen it's not an even trade 
but I'm not saying which side gets gets the better or the worse. We'll just say not an even trade. Uh, so, uh, Jen, have a fantastic time at your convention. I'll do my best. Yep, the one that's just for me. Just for you. Good luck with all of that, and we look forward to seeing you again. And I look forward to seeing everyone else. Thank you. Yes.